Now we need to solve these coupled equations of motion. So when we had the equation of motion of a single mass um, on a spring or a single pendulum, we guessed the solution. Remember, we guessed, we plugged it in, see if it works, etc. So we're still going to guess, but now we need to guess with insight. Okay? We're going to guess a very special kind of solution. We're going to guess a normal mode. Right? So normal modes are special because what it means is all bodies move at the same sinusoidal frequency. So to make this guess, we have to figure out how can this thing move in a way that everything moves at the same frequency. So let's have a look. It can move in many different ways. It can move like this. It can move like this. It can fall off. Lots of bad things can happen. But one way you can imagine, if you think about sort of a real symmetric way it can move, is if you pull them together and get them going together. Oops, that's not a very good example. There. That's a normal mode. Because you can see they're both basically moving together. They're both moving at the same frequency. So we could sort of draw that one. Uh, you could kind of think of it as um, like this. They're both kind of, I'll draw them somewhat exaggerated. They're both moving like that, A and B. We'll call that mode one. And we're going to give it the nickname sum. And you'll see why in a minute. Is there another one? Let's see. How else could they move? Um, and always be at the same frequency. So the other one is we could get them together and let them come apart. And now they're both moving together. They don't have to be in phase, but in this case they're also, oh no, they're out of phase in this case. Moving at the same frequency. So we could kind of draw that mode. We could call it mode two and draw it kind of like this. A is out here, B is out there. And at the moment I'm drawing the picture, this one's moving out and this one's moving out. And then they come back together. We'll call this DIFF for difference. The sum mode and the difference mode. All right. What's the third normal mode of this system? Let's see, how else could I move it to come up with a third? Oh, that's right, there is no third. Right? There are only two. There are only two normal modes because you have you get uh, one normal mode for each degree of freedom of the system. So when you're having to guess and figure out normal modes by hand, that's the one piece of help you get is you know how many there are. In this case, we have two degrees of freedom. This can move along this path and this can move along this path. Now, a real object in three-dimensional space has more degrees of freedom than that, right? They can move like this, and they can move up and down, and they can twist and spin. But right now, in this simple problem, we're just thinking of it as a simple pendulum. And in that case, each one has one degree of freedom, and that's to move back and forth. And since we have two masses, two degrees of freedom total. So there's only two normal modes. If you come up with a third one, just email it to me, all right? So now, using these, let's see if we can use them mathematically. <laughs> 